Proverbs 6, we're back in the scene. Give me a few more minutes. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says this. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are abomination to him. Haughty eyes. Oh, Lord. Lying lips. Mm. Hands that shed innocent blood. Doctors that are bent on collective money. Yeah. Because it's a racket, thanks to God. Again, I fully understand medically that some women in that small two percentage, they do go through series that their life is at stake. And it's either the child or the mother. And I'll be in favor of the mother. Yes, that, that is reality. I'm, I'm not debunking that reality. That does happen sometimes for medical purposes. But just to kill children and kill children, kill just for recreational purposes and all, you won't, you won't get a stop with my name on it. Amen. So that's why hands that shed innocent blood. You got some people that all they want to do is drive more business and live in uh, bigger homes, hey amen, and they making a killer. They making a, a we ain't even call it no living. Because I don't even know how to put the call a living. Ain't best about it. Because somebody else's standard may not be your standard. But all I know is they're making millions and millions of dollars. Hoping that you decide that you want to kill your child. Yes. Yeah. And I know sometimes the doctor will say, well, they're going to be born with this and they're going to be born with that. And we suggest, that may be your suggestion, but I got knees I can, I can fall on. I got a God that I can pray to. He may be born, he may be born with Down syndrome. There may be a chance he may be born with dyslexia. But I got a God that I can talk to that can strain dyslexia, that can strain under the deficiency that you see on the screen. I'm so glad you did the cat scan. Now I know exactly what to pray for. Hey man, somebody. Don't 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 downplay the doctor because he all he's telling you is based on his finite knowledge on what he can see. You ought to walk over and shake his hand and say thank you for letting me know what to pray exactly for. Amen. The heart that devises wicked plans. You have a lot of people. Jeremiah 9, 5 said the Bible said they weary themselves to commit iniquity. Some people work hard to go to hell. They go to hell sweat. I mean working overtime, under time, between time. Amen, somebody. They working weekends, nights, you name it, daytime, nighttime. They work hard and try to get to hell. The Bible said they weary themselves. To commit it. They wear themselves out. The Bible even says in the proverb that they can't go to sleep unless they call somebody to fall. Some people, they get drunk off how they make your life miserable. We talk about gas prices, they going down. And some people just as quiet as they want to be. They ain't talking about the gas price no more. But the food prices show still high. Come on. All right. The Bible says these things are going to take place. Amen. The families, we, we put the Ukraine war on the gas, but who we put on the food? Oh, I know we ain't really asked that question. Why the food going? Why this going? It's going up because that's what they want to do. They control it. But the same God, amen, somebody. We don't have to pray for the gas to go. I told my wife, I ain't praying for no gas to go down. No, I'm bring the income up. No, don't be on that side. Of it. Why do we can trust God to bring things down when we can't trust God to bring things up? As long as you leave, you, as long as you live, you're going to need some more money. I'm just satisfied. You satisfied today, but five years later, when the new norm for your life bill is four hundred dollars instead of two hundred dollars, are you still gonna be saying that song? I'm satisfied. No, you gonna need some more duckies. What happens in the womb is unique. Let me go back. I didn't finish that verse. The heart that devises uh, we can plant feet that, sh that that make haste to run to evil. You got some people they visit by us. They always try. What they, what they say? Ooh, ooh. God hate them kind of people. They the one to wickedness and mischief. A false witness who breathes lies. Mm. They pretend like they just as false phony as a, as a three dollar bill. And if you get one, you better tear it up immediately. And the ones who so uh, so so seeds among the discord okay. among the brothers, seeds of discord among the brothers. These are the things people that God hate. So when people talk about, oh, they smoke a cigarette and they, they, they drink a little bit and they social drink, but let's look at the things God hate that he called abomination. There's a lot of people want to dwell on the sins you can smell and the things people do that you can smell and see the eye. But let's talk about the things you can't see or smell with the eye. The 
the things that's buried deep seated in the heart of people. Come on, somebody. These people just don't wake up overnight thinking these things, trying to make your life miserable. Have you ever went to work and somebody they were just bent on making your life miserable? They just kept pushing and pushing. Have you went in the grocery store? You just as nice as you want to be, picking out your potatoes, getting your come on, somebody, getting your grapes, just shopping in the store, and here's somebody. All they want to do is make your life miserable. People say misery love company. Yeah, they do. They really do. What is what happens in the womb is unique, person forming work of God. And only God knows how deeply and how mysteriously the creation of personhood is woven until the making of a body. Therefore, it is arbitrary and unwarranted to assume that at any point in the knitting together of this person, its destruction is not an assault on the prerogatives of God, the creator. This not only is assault on the prerogatives, even on God. Because there is something uniquely being formed in the womb. And even though you may have been birthed in a mess, God is still bringing you, amen, a blessing out of a mess. Did he do it with Solomon? I think it's, it's 2 Samuel chapter 11 when David summoned Bathsheba. He told her, send for her. And she came. She ain't had no, she, she ain't had no little guy. Mm, who he think he is? I ain't going up there. No, nah, see, you would have been killed. <laughs> you, you didn't refuse a king. Yeah, amen. That wasn't consensual saints of God. Mm. He sent for her. Yeah. And how do you know that even though uh, because Uriah, he even took the, the, the husband and tried to have him come home early from battle to go live with his wife to cover up his sin. Right. And that's something, you, you got some people will go that just that low. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, so when we hear these stories to me, they don't be new because I read my Bible. Amen. And they be like, ooh, did you hear about what happened? I said, yeah, if you read Genesis, you'll read it over there too. Amen. Mm -hmm. You read it in the book, that's why you ain't reading it. Some of us, we wait on the after world turn. We wait on our favorite TV show, talk show, Mari. Oh, back in the day, we used to watch Jerry Springer. Now, I was going to tell you how old I am. But we used to watch these TV shows, and we, man, we couldn't wait to get home, especially the cheetahs. And we're talking about, and the results are here. <laughs> if you read your Bible, you can see, and, and, say, and the results are here. He is not the father. <laughs> Uriah wasn't the father. David the king didn't even stop there. Hmm. Now, 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 now picture this. The Bible regarded him as, as a man that, that was after God's own heart. But if you look at the text of 2 Samuel chapter 11, and the Bible said he also put Uriah in front of the part of the hottest part of the battle and had the men withdrew. Now this is a man after God's own heart. You know, now we're looking at David a little different. Uh, well, how can he do that? Because even though he was a man of the bone of God, but he still had to deal with and contend with the flesh. That's why we have to walk by the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the flesh is saying, man, we gotta cover this up anywhere we can. Yes. Okay, we couldn't get him to come home on early furlough because he didn't want to sleep with because he was so dedicated to the, the men and he's so, so dedicated to fighting alongside his brothers on the battlefield. So I tell you what, put him in the front. Hmm. I like you on fight side by side and y'all just start moving back. Hmm. And sometimes, people in some pivotal places of your life, you'll look around and you'll realize you're standing by yourself. Yes, sir. Oh, right. See, as long as you're at the water cooler, they'll talk strong yeah. with you. They'll hold a fist up and say black power. But when you're in a real kitchen, a real bind, whether you're in a courtroom, classroom, at work, it don't matter. If you're in a critical place and a major decision is about being made against you, Start, you'll look around and you'll be like, wow, what happened to all my motivators? Come on, man. Amen. The Bible says, and the men withdrew. And Uriah died on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad that God had a prophet, Nathan, yes. to tell him a story about a new lamb. David was ready to kill the man until he realized it was him. Amen. After he finished with the story, he said, and you are the man. Mm -hmm. But were ready to kill him before he found out you, he was the man. Yeah. But even after all of that, after his son getting murdered by his brother, after his son raping his sister, all this came down based on one decision that David had made prior to this. 
So don't you debunk your decisions and think that they are minute and minor. No, you got to stay in saints of God. Your decisions are more pivotal than what you think they is as a Christian. What you stand for is more pivotal than what you think as a Christian. And here, even after all that calamity in his house, God still granted David because he told him that this, your kingdom, will should forever reign. Your, your family line forever rule. And Jesus came, amen, through David. But yet and still Solomon was born. So don't think just because you came in a certain situation and just because you had a baby out of wedlock with a dude that you thought that he, you loved him, but come to find out he, all he enjoyed was being on top of you, you can still birth a miracle. You still can birth and have a blessing that's going to be a blessing to many. Mm. You've had inventors that was given up for adoption, but yet it still invented some things that we use to this day. So don't, don't, don't think that just because you came here a certain way or just because you had a baby in a certain situation or even if you was one that aborted children, but you can forgive yourself. You don't have to hold your head down any longer. And you can tell your brother, you can tell your sister, yeah, I may have done it in the past, but God has forgiven me and I can walk away free in me. Release yourself from it. Amen. That's enough. That's enough. This part two to this. The blessedness of human life. I didn't even get to the other statistics I have. I'll read it at another time. The blessedness created in the image of God. We are created in the image of God. Even Jeffrey Dahmer was created in the image of God. Saddam Hussein was created in the image of God. Come on, somebody. Adolf Hitler. Now that, that some people can't even swallow that. Mm -hmm. But God said, I created man in my image and after my likeness. But now the way that we choose to follow, it can either be good or evil. They just became evil. And it was tools, amen, to do what God wanted them to do. Because God is all known. We can't say God is all known when things going good. Mm -hmm. You don't think God could have stopped the Holocaust? You don't think he could have stopped the 400, uh, actually more than that, 400 plus years of slavery that some people still experience to this day? You don't think God can say, that's enough? You don't think God can send a wind and blow on COVID and COVID-19 is over with? You don't think God got that kind of power? It ain't just in the book. God power extend beyond your imagination can think. Yes. He's God. Talk to him like he's God. I pray to him like he's God. I talk to him just like he God. Yeah. And whatever I'm lacking, I talk to God. I don't talk to people. I talk to God about yeah. it. Come on, somebody. David said in Psalm 37, 25, I've been young, but now I'm old. But I never seen the righteous forsaken. Now I'm see, baby, break. You got to use scripture, saints of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If the word is your foundation, you better yeah. use it. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Mm. But there's blessedness in human life. Some people even experience incest. Yeah. But there is something good can come out of that. Yeah. Yeah. Some people been raped, violated. They look at relationships totally different, and I understand. I'm not a woman, but it, if I have just experienced some other violations as a man, so I can understand to some degree how you feel to be violated. Hey Amen. Your, your, your flesh being taken, somebody taking advantage of you. Nobody like you. How many of you like to be taken advantage of? I don't care what you just think about. It. Nobody in here like to be taken advantage of. Yeah. And sometimes we get angry because we see somebody else getting taken advantage of. Yeah. And that's why some of these civil rights and these other things came about because people got tired of being taken advantage of. And this day and age, people still don't want equality. Mm -hmm. In that sign, they do not want equality because at the end of the day, certain groups of people still want other people to be far beyond opportunity. But there's opportunity for all of us. And sometimes when opportunity don't allow, God will give you the mind and the ingenuity to create opportunity. Quit waiting on people to give you something. Quit waiting on people to notice your name. Come on, somebody. I'm over all of that. If you don't give me the opportunity, I believe God will give me the mind and create opportunity for myself. Amen. You may be a resource, but God is still the source. Amen. God will remove people out of your path. Come on, somebody. God has killed people. Because what they didn't do. He killed, he killed Herod because he didn't give him the glory. And the Bible said he allowed a worm to eat him up. That's God. When God won't kill me, he will. Amen. 
<laughs> oh, people don't believe that. Yes, sir. The Bible says, don't fear him that destroy the body. But fear him to destroy both body and soul yes. into hell. How you think they get to hell? God put them there. It ain't no bus to get there. You put them there. Let us stand. Let us stand.